Hey there. Uh, hey, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about digital agency tax strategies. And the question I want to address is, should your digital agency be a C corporation due to the tax law changes that lowered the C corporation tax rates? And so the thought process there, and, and I'm going to tell you right off the top, so I don't waste too much of your time, is that rarely would it be the case that I would advise you should be a C corporation just to arbitrage tax rates, because as I'm going to talk about, it's not as simple as you might think, and it doesn't often work out. Um, and I'm going to try to stay at a high level without doing a lot of complex numerical examples. So, um, so bear with me on that. I'm just going to throw out some observations and then just some kind of uh, mathematical intuition as to why choosing to be a C corporation to arbitrage rates in a professional service environment of a of a digital agency is probably not going to work out for you in most cases. Um, but the, the background to this idea is that <clears throat> the C corporation income tax rate federally was reduced down to 21%. And that, of course, many of you may know is a lot is less than a lot of uh, digital agency owners. If you were to look at the owners or shareholders of digital agencies, their individual tax rates are probably higher than that 21% or often are higher than that 21%. And so if your choice is, well, do you make it a flow through entity where the income flows through and hits the individual owner's tax return, or do you tax it at the C-Corp? At first blush, it sounds attractive. Well, maybe we tax it in the C-Corp because it has that lower tax rate. But here's the skinny on why it probably doesn't work out the way you think. First off is that when they lowered the C-Corporation tax rate down to 21%, there was another tax uh, law that was passed, which was the Qualified Business Income Deduction. Now, your digital agency may not may not really get the benefit of that because if your income is high enough and you basically are a service business, then when your adjusted gross income as an individual is high enough, you don't really get the benefit of the, the QBI deduction. But you may be in a zone where your income is still low enough that you can get some benefit of the QBI deduction. So that that muddies the waters. It's not clear that, you're, that the 21% federal uh, corporate income tax rate is better than your individual tax rate if you take into account if you take into account that QBI deduction possibility. The other consideration that muddies the waters is that <clears throat> if you are going to uh, run your business inside the C corporation and presumably not pay yourself a wage but take a dividend, you have a double tax. You have the 21% federal income tax, but then you also have tax on the dividend that you pay yourself so you actually have cash in the bank to live your life, right? And that dividend that you pay yourself, depending on your tax bracket, could be taxed at the 15% rate or it could be taxed at the 20% rate if you have a higher if you have a higher uh, tax rate. And it could also be subject to what we call the net investment income tax, which is a, an additional factor which muddies the waters on this. Now, the additional component which makes this kind of planning difficult and not likely to benefit not likely to benefit you the way you think it will is considering state income taxes i'm in the state of oregon oregon has an income tax so not only does the company pay a 21 percent income tax on its on its profits but it pays an oregon income tax on its profits and when that dividend is paid out to the shareholder, not only does the shareholder pay a second level of tax federally for the dividend, but the shareholder pays a second level of tax state-wise for that dividend. So they, you get this combination of both uh, corporate and dividend taxes. And when you put that together for both Fed and state, it doesn't start to look as attractive anymore to be the C corporation just to get that lower 21% rate. Now, one thing that is on, on the side currently, what appears to be on the side of being a C corporation is you might avoid self-employment taxes. So when the income, when income flows through to you and you're not a C corporation, let's say that your business is taxed as a partnership or it's taxed as an S corporation. Uh, if it's taxed as a partnership or a sole proprietorship, let me say that, not a not an S corporation, but a sole proprietorship or a partnership, and you have that income show up on your personal 1040, that income often would be self-employment income, which is subject to a 15, which is a 15% self-employment income tax. If that income is earned in a C corporation and no wages are actually paid, you're just paid a dividend, there is no self-employment tax. So you avoid that self-employment tax potentially structured as this C corporation. But when you weigh that in, you're just gonna have to trust me the math on this, when you weigh that in, avoiding that 15% self-employment tax still doesn't really negate the double tax effects of paying both the corporate tax and 
uh, paying both the corporate tax and the dividend tax, both federally and state-wise, uh, and considering that you might be foregoing the QBI deduction, the Qualified Business Income Deduction, on your individual return, when you take all those into account, my observation and my mathematical intuition is you really aren't going to benefit from trying to be a C-Corp structure and utilize these new rates uh, in that way unless you happen to be in the highest income tax brackets and have a lot of income subject to tax. And it's possible that on the margin, being a C corporation in that, in that scenario, paying out a dividend might give you a marginally less total global tax rate, total combined tax rate. Uh, but I, you can see I'm really hedging. This is a hard conversation to do in a short video because you really have to run through lots of scenarios and examples and spreadsheets to really know which one is actually better. All I can tell you from my intuition and from looking at all the examples, the average run of the mill case, it's not better to be a C corporation from a tax rate perspective. But don't take my word for it. Run through the actual scenarios or work with somebody who can help you run through the scenarios. Um, just, I think the value of this video though, you know, even though I'm saying, well, you still have to do the detailed analysis yourself. You can't just rely on me saying this, but the value of this video is I'm giving you an intuition to start with. So when it comes out the way I'm saying, you have some confirmation. You have some confirmation that if you find by running the scenarios that, hey, wait a minute, being a C corporation actually isn't better. You have me telling you in this video that that's often the way it does turn out. And so, and so you can have some confidence in some of those analysis or calculations that you're either doing or having somebody else do with you.